Hi everyone, welcome to a special pre-recorded version of Local Chat. If you normally watch this live, this is going to be a little bit weird. If you listen to the hot podcast on Apple or perhaps Google, then this won't mean a thing to you and you're like, what the heck is this guy talking about? Well, that doesn't really matter. But joining me today is a man who thinks whiteboards don't erase. It's Ian Gibson. They don't. You, you write on them. That's true. It's true. And also joining me is a man who is seven hours in the future. It's the official procrastinator himself. Carl, how are you doing? I'm doing good. The world hasn't ended yet, so so far everything's good. That's good. It's like if we want to know like horse race results and just ask yep. you, and then we, yep. we just bet them. It's like mm -hmm. back to the future. Oh, that was a good bit. Anyways, folks, we're going to be talking about gaming news today. Uh, you may have noticed I look a little bit different because I'm shooting in the studio because it's easier this week because I have things to do here. Um, not much going on. I, I was saying to Chris earlier today, not much going on in the week of news. And then like four or five things happened today. And I was just like, oh, OK, let's talk about those today. So before we get to the news topics, though, we got to talk about what we've been playing. And to kick us off, I'm going to start with the guest, special special guest. Carl, what have you been playing? Uh, well, I've been playing a bit of Valorant, the right games game. Um, mm. It's been an interesting experience, to say the least. I've seen a lot of people compare it to CSGO. I can see how that is. It's a bit different. Guns are a bit less predictable. Game all in all is pretty good. Community kind of is weird because nine times out of ten, you'll have someone who just leaves the game midway through, and it's just Oof. not a good experience all overall. No, that, but it's that's fun. how you play video games. I just yes. join lobbies that's and true. I leave halfway through. <laughs> Uh, yeah. But other than that, I've been playing a bit of Night in the Woods. Bridge from Save Data recommended it to me, and it was free on Epic Games, I think, at one point. It's been an interesting experience. It's, uh, it's like a kind of visual novel type deal with interesting characters. The main character is a 19-year-old who dropped out of college. So it's been, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's been an interesting experience. Um, yeah. Nice. Um... Yeah, Night in the Woods, I am I probably got about halfway through on a flight to somewhere. It was a flight to somewhere. And uh I really enjoyed it. And I have it on my Switch and I have yet to ever go back to it because I haven't been on another flight. Um and then Valorant Chris plays that and he talks to me about it all the time and I say, That is a popular game in which he pulled up Twitch and showed me it is a very popular game. Which I mm -hmm. was thinking of Crucible, which is not a very popular game. It's <laughs> a dead game. Crucible's <laughs> dead, dead now. I th yeah, didn't they shut? Did they mm -hmm. shut down yeah. the studio? Yeah. Um, um, I swear, if one more person talks about Valorant, I'm just gonna have to play it. I'm just gonna have to try it. Why don't you? And report back. Because I just I don't have enough motivation to play it. My concern mostly is that I really liked Counter Strike. Not so much Go, more like 1.6 and Source. And it wasn't because of the serious, like, search and destroy bomb defusal matches. It was more for the community aspect. It was, it was Surf. It was Zombies. It was Trouble and Terrors Town. It was all the weird different little mods that were going on and the custom maps and all that gun game. And so my concern is that Valorant is too much of that try-hard CSGO 5v5. And... I'm not saying I won't like that, but that is not what I love the most about Counter-Strike. So I, I'm willing to give it a shot, but not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Uh, that's great. Carl, you've been playing anything else, or is that, is that your main jam this past week? I kind of played a bit more of uh, Cyberpunk again, but that's just... We can <laughs> yeah. surf, surf past it. <laughs> Cyberpunk. Uh, great. Awesome. Uh, Ian, what have you been playing? Uh, well, I was on vacation, so for a majority of the time that I was gone, I was left to the whims of my seven-year-old nephew's games and what he wanted to play. Uh, he tried to get me to play Roblox again. Nope, not going to fall for it. Um, there was an interesting moment where he had some friends over on the back patio, and they were all wearing masks, and they're on the back patio playing their Switch on the TV. And uh, I wasn't with them, but I kind of knew what they were doing. And for the first... 20 minutes, I think they played Mario Kart. No, they played Rocket League. 
And then for a solid 45 minutes, they played Donkey Kong Country. <gasps> what? I, I don't know why. I mean, I know it's on the Switch. It's like the Eddie's classic whatever thing they have on there. But I don't know why they were just obsessed with that one. It's so and good. then they just pulled up a bunch of really bad YouTubers for the last hour. And we're just watching really bad like kids YouTubers. Um, That's how we do But it. the main thing that he's been playing and the only thing that I was like, step aside, kiddo, it's time for me to to play is American Truck Simulator. Um, I have not played it. My I've played Euro Truck Simulator. My nephew has, this is not an exaggeration, he literally has 150 plus hours in Euro Truck Simulator too, because he just plays it all the time. Um, and at some point in the past, some point in the past six months, he got American Truck Simulator. And who cares about Europe? It's all about America now. Um, and I, I have some news. It's good. It's just as good as Euro Truck Simulator 2. It's not quite as big, but they're adding states. Um, they've added some stuff, like there are like accidents that can happen. So you'll be driving down the GPS, the highway, and the GPS is like, go straight. And then all of a sudden the highway is closed because there's like an accident. There's like a jackknife trailer, and they're just like, there's like cops there being like, nope, you got to exit the highway. And you're just like, oh no. <laughs> um, and then there's like a huge mod scene. So my nephew, like he plays it, but he doesn't really have a career. He just installs a bunch of mods and then drives around. And so that was fun. But there's also this moment. I'm curious if you guys have ever had a similar moment where I used to live in Yuma, Arizona. And that city is in the game. So I drove to and I drove through Yuma, Arizona. And it's not, it's not like a one-to-one, -one, you know, they kind of like scale it down. But they had the Yuma County Prison, which is famous in American history. They had like the general feel of it. And it definitely looked like Yuma. Have you guys ever had that moment where you come across a space or a location that you've been in the real world and you come across it in a video game? You guys ever had that? No, Carl, you've never had that? Yeah, I, <laughs> I live in a country that's extremely small, unseeable in the, like in the naked eye. So I can yeah. say that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I was thinking um... even like um, talking about Counter-Strike, I remember one of my... There used to be a really popular Counter Strike source map, which was in a McDonald's, and that was always weird. Like playing in a playing CS in a McDonald's, and you'd be like, "Yeah, this yeah. is a McDonald's. I've been in one of these." <laughs> Go to the uh, playpen. Yeah. I uh, when I first moved to the New York City area, I was playing a bunch of Division One, and that mm -hmm. was weird because I literally could go find the building I worked in. Or the place like I took the train to and all that sort of stuff. And same with uh, yeah. Spider Man when that came out, I could like go check stuff out. But that's cool. Not yeah. like my hometown. Um, another one was uh, Fallout Three because it takes place in DC, and the thing is, I mean, there's a lot in DC where you're like, oh, it's the Lincoln Memorial, blah blah blah. Uh, I'm not saying that. Okay, just to be clear, <laughs> I support <laughs> Lincoln. I support what he did. <laughs> it's just who cares? It's a giant national mo memorial that's in everything. <laughs> But you go in like the subway stations in Fallout 3 and they have the the metro stations in DC have a very iconic ceiling where it's just like concrete squares, like three dimensional square grid. And that's in the game. And I remember walking into metro station, looking up and being like, whoa, I know that, you know, and it's pretty cool. <laughs> Those are the squares. Um, yeah. But anyways, American Truck Simulator, uh, it's, it's it's good. The only thing is it's it's basically the same as Euro Truck. They haven't really. Yeah, added a whole lot in terms of mechanics, except for like the traffic diversion. It's just a new location, new trucks. That's pretty much it. Um, the other game I have been playing, I know we've been talking about it a lot, but I want to call it out. I went about nine days without playing video games, except for like the occasional American Truck Simulator. And the only thing I wanted to do when I came back was sit down and play Valheim for five hours. Um, and I think that's a big testimonial to that game. We've talked about it before. Talked about it with other games where you can play it for a little bit and then you fall off. I'm just very surprised. That is a big like speed bump for me where it's just like, slow down, don't touch this game for nine days. And then I really just wanted to hop back into it, even though we're we're pretty far. I don't want to say we're far in the game, but we probably put dozens of hours at this point. So Valheim, still a fantastic game. We're still trucking. We've got some iron. We're about to beat bone mass. Check out the streams. Oh. Uh, fantastic game. Highly recommend it. I have not fallen off it yet, which in my perception is like huge kudos to the game if I have not fallen off it yet. So good stuff there. Yeah. Um, I, I own American truck simulator. Cause I think when you gave me the Euro truck bug, there was like a deal. So I bought both of them. Mm. 
And then, uh, yeah, Euro Truck has the accident stuff because I've only played that, and I turned oh, it off. So it, it's a different setting though, and you can set it to like different levels uh, of like, like GPS. No, it's it's okay. You don't have to apologize. My nephew's a liar. Clearly, oh, because clearly. he's the one that told me it was new. <laughs> but the other thing that so. came with my Euro Truck is, uh, I don't think it's called Big Loads, but that's all I can think oh, of what no, it's no. called. God. <laughs> I don't think it's called that, but it's oversized loads or something. It sounds awful. Uh, but it's like giant, uh, like plane fuselages oh. and like bigger things. Yeah. So you get like special hazards and stuff, and like you also get an. There's some of them you get a police car escort. So you wow. like have to drive with them, and that is super fun. There's also I know there's a train DLC for it, but I don't think I bought it. I keep getting like because I wish listed a bunch of them, so half mm -hmm. of my like Steam sale stuff is like this is a dollar off, and then I'm like I don't want to pay nine dollars for Iberia, um, um, so I'm I, not gonna do that. It's funny you bring up trains because that game it really just needs to go the DCS world route and just be like. Now it's Train Simulator, America Train Simulator, and it's the same game, and you could do it side by side in multiplayer or whatever. Like you can have a truck company next to your train company. They just need to start yeah. adding in that, add in a boat, maritime shipping, add in plane shipping. Just make it all about transportation and logistics simulator. That's full bore. Yeah, like transportation fever is that, but on a Sim City scale. But just bring it yeah. down, and then you can like control yeah. everything. I just want like, I, I want I want the truck simulator, but I want to do it with boats. I want to do it with planes. I want to do it with last mile deliveries. Like you're a FedEx driver, and you got to do eighty deliveries in a day. I want all of that, and I want it all in the same game, so it's all cross. And then I and then I want official multiplayer on top because it's just third party right now. Yeah, these are our demands. Listen, <laughs> do it, do it. Um, yeah, those games have weird, uh, I need to, like, figure out the word to describe how those games satisfy, like, the weird brain problems in my head. It's just, like, relaxing, and you can, like, listen to podcasts or Euro, Euro techno and just, like, chill out. Yeah. Um, as far as what I've been playing, some Valheim, I... I think it was just the circumstances of playing on stream the other night is like, I just finished getting my computer together. I just brought a bunch of stuff upstairs. I was trying to eat dinner. I was just like kind of all over the place, but I was also happy to be streaming. So I basically mm -hmm. was just there to talk to you guys. Cause I haven't talked to anyone like on Subpixel or anything. So yeah, that was kind of nice. Yeah. Karen, it's the hand with her all the time. Um, the other thing I've been playing, which some of you may have watched, is Turning Point Fall of Liberty. Uh, Chris and I finally finished that yesterday, and boy, the last like 15 minutes, 15 minutes of that game are an absolute nightmare. There's a whole section where you should have a rocket launcher, but if you didn't keep it, you have to like run and grab one and try to make your way back. Oof. And then, oh yeah, I died so many times. We almost gave up, and we were. Oh, it was just, oh, it was a nightmare. The checkpoints in that game suck. Um, but speaking of good games that are alternate history, I went home and I started playing Wolfenstein The New Order, which is a game I have played before. Uh, either of you played Wolfenstein New Order? Carl's shaking his head. I thought, I thought we had oh. talked about this, how the story is great, but the gameplay is not, so it's just not worth replaying. I feel like we've had this conversation two or three times. I, I say that, I agree with you, but for two. I don't like the gameplay of two. I prefer the gameplay of one. One is That's a better fair. stealth game and like killing things. Two had a good story, but I didn't enjoy like the gameplay I don't think is as tight or as good in that mm -hmm. one, even though you get your head cut off at one point, which is pretty great. Uh it's great in first person. Um highly recommend playing Wolfenstein if you have Game Pass. It's part of the Bethesda stuff. I think it was already on it before anyways. Uh, definitely check it out. It's just about killing Nazis. It's pretty good. We love killing Nazis. Here at Subpixel, I'm not afraid to say it. Um, speaking of killing Nazis, we are going to kill some news, but not actually kill it. Uh, we're going to go over to the news. I'm going to play the news song because, you know, it's good. It's a good news song. Here we go, folks. Time for the news. Oh, 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 you know, 
I did a bad. Here we go. Now it's time for the news. Here's the news. We're talking about news. It's gaming news. What's up, news? Oh, I don't know if you guys know this, but I pipe him in live every time to do that. Um, <laughs> he just, I give him like a candy bar every time. He loves it. Uh, folks, oh. it's been a newsy week. Uh, lots of things have happened, as you can tell by the brilliant thumbnail I made that has a bottle of Hanch on it, because we love Hanch in this household. Is Hanch uh, real? I feel something about it's that. Real. I what is, it's, it's real. What is it? It's just what is it? No, it's it's hot sauce picante and ranch, um, which I don't know why you don't call it picante ranch, but Heinz is a dumb company. <laughs> I don't know. Ranch is not bad. Is it just hot ranch? Yeah. I guess. If, uh, like no, I don't know. We'll, I put ranch. that story in here so we we can get down to it. Oh. Um. I'm going to be polite, which isn't a thing I usually do, uh, and I'm going to go with Mr. Carl here. Is there anything here you desperately want to chat about, my my man? Uh, hmm, let's see here. Uh, well, I don't as, mean as to put you on the, the Heinz, spot. So. <laughs> as much as the Heinz thing is probably the biggest story that we have on here. <laughs> I think... <laughs> maybe... Maybe the Discord and... The Discord Microsoft thing, because that okay. was a big chonker. Um, so essentially, there have been talks that Microsoft may be uh, in talks to purchase Discord for a whopping, or maybe over a whopping $10 billion, which is weird. Uh, and it, that's a whole thing, because M Microsoft definitely have been making power moves, especially recently in the recent years. Um, and to implement, to make Game Pass a bigger power, they've been working a way to implement Nitro, the premium thing on Discord, yeah. into Game Pass. Um, so I think it's an interesting thing that they are trying to do. Will it work? Maybe. Um, I just want to shout out Twitter friend UC Gundam, who had a tweet go viral because he basically quoted the news story and then just said, quote, they are stupid as F, I download it for free. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I just, but, I, yeah, I, I just want to say, I think this is a bad move. And let me tell you why it's bad. Well, I, I, I don't think it's a bad move on Microsoft part. I think it's bad for the consumer. And here's why. As somebody who has used Skype personally, as somebody who has used Skype for business, for work, and as somebody who is used, currently using Microsoft Teams, they are not very good at chat platforms. Um, and a lot of it is just, I don't know, it's... it's um, I forget what the term is. There's a term for it, but it's basically it's like it's they're chasing the flash of of new new ideas and new products that are taking off. Um, they did it with Skype and then they didn't really do much with it, kind of drove it into the ground with teams. They're chasing Discord, but they're also chasing Slack and they're not really doing a good job of it. Um, so yeah. if they buy Discord, I see Discord as they're probably just going to turn it into they're either going to fold it into teams or they're going to try and add some sort of weird stuff to it that is going to drive away the user base or they're just going to let it languish and they're not going to, to develop it further so as much as i feel like the xbox arm of microsoft is doing great things i don't trust the other parts of microsoft and i really wish they would leave discord alone yeah i, I don't want to sign up for a microsoft account to make a discord and also yeah. i feel like i'm a part of a bunch of discords like discord is the closest not the closest, but one of the closest feelings to the wild west of the internet that people had in like the early 2000s that I felt yeah. like I have a discord that is like Mario. It's Mario party net play. So it's like all the people who want to play Mario party technically illegally over the internet with each other can just hop mm -hmm. into rooms. It has all the like paste links to download the ROMs and stuff. And it's like, I have so many of these discords that are just like random crap that are just fun to check in on. And I don't want Microsoft's fingers and all these pies just being yeah. like, make sure you're wholesome. Um, because people yeah. can self-regulate. Um, uh, I believe that wholeheartedly. Um, but yeah, I really, I mean, if, if I was Microsoft, I also don't understand the $10 billion price tag, not because I don't think it's worth it, but because if, if I'm understanding Microsoft properly, and I'm pretty sure this is their intention is we need to make Microsoft teams better. 
and we need to make Skype better. And rather than put that work in and copy everybody else, which everybody does, we're just going to buy an existing platform. But they need to know that their track record is not good. And Discord is definitely worth $10 billion now. But as soon as Microsoft gets their hands on it, that valuation is going to plummet. It's not like Minecraft where it's going to keep printing money. Um, they should really just spend, you know, a couple billion dollars and just do a whole bunch of dev crunch. Well, sorry, not not crunch. Crunch is bad, but a whole bunch of dev work to just <laughs> take the features they like from Discord and throw them into Teams, throw them into Skype, rebrand it, relaunch it, etc. They can just save a lot of money that way, and it's less of a of a risk of ten billion dollars going down the drain. Yeah, and I mean, I agree. I don't know why you'd pay this price when it is free. So, uh, just like I guess Bill Gates sitting there. Uh, but it is interesting. I mean, it's crazy how because I remember when like someone would be like, "Oh, here's Discord. It's this new thing. Like, check it out." And then I feel like in a flash, it just grew. But then everyone's like, oh, my own Discord. Here's my Discord. Discord this. And then I had like Discord anxiety about what ones I'm joining. And then they let you put them in folders now. So now I'm part of infinitely more of them. But I hate notifications. Oh, Turn I them didn't on. know about folders. Is that an actual thing? Yeah, you drag them on top of each other and they go into little folders. <gasps> no way. The wow. sheer joy on Carl's face. I'm going to need a couple <laughs> minutes over <laughs> here. <laughs> yeah, I... Mine's my folders are porn, more porn, <laughs> sexy porn, and not so sexy porn. Um, I will say, I if I was Discord though, I would take this deal in a heartbeat because they are barely oh, yeah. monetized at all right now. Like they're struggling with the Discord Nitro subscriptions. They're struggling with how to monetize it properly. And uh, this valuation, this is take that money and run, baby. Take that. Uh, Discord's your baby, but but take it. Man. I um I subscribe to Discord because I'm forgetful. That's the only reason I have Discord Nitro. <laughs> <laughs> um, and also they do like apparently it's higher quality audio. I don't believe it, but it, it could be. Um, sweet, awesome. Uh, moving on. Actually, Carl, I had a question. The poster in your background is that of different types of shots? That I am going to be honest here. I never actually read it. Um, it's been, my dad bought it at one point. My mom got pissed at him. So he just left it here in the basement. Uh, <laughs> really? Multiple like, shots and recipes and shit. I'm very into that. Okay. You mix up a couple and then ship them on over, but not through the Suez Canal. Because um, backed up. Wait a minute. I'm sorry. Wait a minute. Will, do you know where Lebanon is? <laughs> no, Carl, you're in Lebanon, know. right? Yeah, yes. Yes, no, I do know it where it is. It's in I know where it is. It's not <laughs> on the other side of the Suez Canal. But if he was going the other way, you no. can make it take longer. Well oh my goodness. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> You're allowed to sail out. Don't tell me what to do with my shipping company. Uh speaking of shipping companies, Amazon Games wants to ship more games to you, specifically why are they doing this? Why are they doing Montreal. this? Montreal. <laughs> they. I'm gonna look it up real quick. I'm pretty sure they have had zero like marginal successes, just none at all. You know what? When at first you don't succeed, close your studio and try, try again. Um. Yeah. Let's. Have they put out any games other got, than I've Crucible? Um. They put out a bunch yeah, of yeah, Astro yeah. games. Their mm -hmm. New World isn't out yet. They put out the Grand Tour game, which was. An absolute failure. Uh, oh, I that's forgot sad. about that. They canceled Nova. They canceled Intensity. They canceled Breakaway. They canceled Crucible. Um, you know, their Wikipedia is, you know, it's sad when their Wikipedia list of games they have released includes Dragon's Lair, which is platform Twitch extension. <laughs> it's not a game. That's just an applet for Twitch. That's no, all. but that's the platform. It's just like, <laughs> why would they do this? They have all these studios that are already working on games that they have canceled. Why would you open a new studio expecting things to change? Unless, there's, there's one caveat here. Unless they snagged somebody incredible and that person wants to work out of Montreal. And so they say, okay, we'll open a new studio just for you. Is that what happened? Is this Jade Raymond or was it somebody else? Jade Raymond was somebody else. <laughs> 
Is this what happened? Um, I know the founding members are Luke Bouchard, Xavier Marquis, Alexander Remy, and oh, man, these are dope names. Yeah, so they came out of Rainbow Six Siege, probably out of Ubisoft uh, Montreal. Mm-hmm. But I don't, I don't, I don't really understand it unless they're giving them blank slate for a new project. And it, it's Amazon, sure, spend that money, but the answer to your problems is not open a new studio. It's, it's, you got to change a lot, man. It's that yeah. post Bezos crisis, man. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, they've been open since uh, 2011 as the Amazon. Mm-hmm. Game Studios. Sorry, so. I was I was just looking up because those names were pretty cool. And do you know the the game director for Death Loop? He's been in a lot of the videos. He's the French guy from Arcane Lyon. I mm-hmm. never knew his name. His name is Dinga Bakaba, and I think that is the coolest name ever. Wow, is that not cool? I like cool names. Sorry, it just. Reading those names made me think of it, and I was talking about it the other day. Also, looking forward to Deathloop, but this guy's got a cool name. Um. Anyways, fine. Give me silence on the cool name. Cold shoulder on the cool name. Have you said the name yet? I said it already. I hate you so much. I know where Lebanon is. <laughs> <laughs> anyways... I'm going to, what do you, Ian, you talk about something. You're the uh, worst. I'm not sure how to feel about this. We need to talk about the Ghost of Tsushima movie is in the works with the John Wick director. I want y'all's opinions first. Carl, how are you feeling about this? I mean, I mean, I think it's great that kind of games are being pushed into the mainstream and, and people can kind of acknowledge how narration can be really well done in games to the point where they want to make movies about them. But I think they're going to milk it too much to the point where it's just not going to work at all. Yeah. I um, I don't know. Part of me is like this John Wick director. He he does some interesting stuff, especially with the action scenes. Um, and if he keeps that cinematic quality of, of Ghost of Tsushima, then have that cinematic quality plus real good samurai action scenes. I could see it being good. But at the same time, it's still... It's a Western studio making a game about Japan. And now they're like, let's get a Western director to make a movie about Japan. And it just seems it's a lot of aping of Japanese tradition. And at some point it's like, I don't know. I don't know. Like they're okay. So let's talk. It's like, you know, uh, Star Wars is influenced a lot by Seven Samurai, et cetera. And I think that's okay because you're taking inspiration. But I think it's a little weird for a white westerner to basically say i'm gonna make a samurai movie and it's gonna be a straight samurai movie it's not gonna be ghost dog which was basically like a western you haven't you haven't seen is it it's is it called ghost dog or ghost samurai it's forrest whitaker as a samurai in america it's really weird and but i'm fine with it because you're adapting you're not just going i like japanese movies i'm gonna go make a japanese movie i feel like that's a little wonky um, plus, also, I don't think the story in Ghost of Tsushima was that great. I think the characters were good, but the overall story wasn't that great. So, honestly, I think this is just going to be a generic movie with decent action scenes and a pretty look. And I don't think we need any more of those. So, yeah. but I, I was excited. thinking at least, like, I believe the Sucker Punch guys are like the heads of production for the movie, mm-hmm. and those two were the ones who were promoted as the Tsushima like official tour guide people like the honorary tour guide mm-hmm. people and also I think that movie is pretty easy to cast because most of those characters were a motion and face captures and be probably and I mean they were like made for the role um, and I, I agree with you on like the the like wonkiness of like a white director making or a western director making a, a Japanese movie or something and I think that's mostly because when those movies are made, they're just not made well or respectfully well. Like, I think it could be done, but the past just shows that, like, I don't believe it could be done. Um, yeah. Because, yeah. It's interesting, though. I, 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 like, it's, it is a very narration heavy video game. So I think it's easy to tell. Like, I can already kind of place it in my head, having played most of the game. Like, a lot of that stuff is 
beginning scene and then like montage of becoming the best samurai with little stories in between and then yeah. saving the uncle and all that sort of stuff. So it'll be neat. It'll probably be way better than the Mulan movie and way less controversial and supported of genocide. So anyways, uh, moving on, uh, man, that is just, that's exciting. I'm kind of excited about it. Um, Carl, anything else on here you want to, you want to chat about? I mean, there was that Spider-Man spiel with Marvel's Avengers, which Marvel's Avengers, if you're watching this and you're still playing it, you're one of the three people that are still playing it. <laughs> yep. um, so long story short, the game was released on I'm pretty sure all platforms, um, and they were going to make Spider-Man an exclusive character for the PlayStation game. And then they released a roadmap, which, by the way, CDPR, you can put dates on roadmaps. It's fantastic. They did it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so on this roadmap, there was no mention of Spider-Man. So there is there's like a big question mark as to when that's happening and if that's been delayed. And yeah, yeah, it's it's interesting because like I feel like Spider-Man was the upfront promise. They're like, yeah, Spider-Man, he's gonna be in it. He's gonna be in it. And then like they just revealed Black Panther and all this stuff. And I'm just surprised they're still really. I mean, this this could be the tail end of the stuff they've prepped. Uh, and they're kind of just trying to push it out there to hope people latch on, but I, I just don't think it's going to happen. Like Ian, I, 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 I think you're the only one who's played it in any sense out of all of us. Uh, yeah, I played Carl, it. You have about 50 hours in it, I think. So <laughs> I no, played. Sadly, I don't. <laughs> I played it for an hour. The storytelling was great. Gameplay was awful. It was just like. I don't want to say awful, but it just felt really bland, generic, didn't feel good. It was like it was like pretty heavy handed in terms of like, here's a quick time event and auto aim. So it didn't. It was trying too heavily to be cinematic, but not really giving you enough control to make you feel like you're the hero. Um, and so I kind of dropped it. And I know there's a lot of stuff around it where people say, like, the grind is a bit bad. The enemies are the same. Um as far as I know, if you join a team of four to play online, like you can't have multiples of the same hero, which stinks because you're leveling up each hero. So if I've leveled up Hulk and I join a party and somebody's like, I already picked Hulk, then I'm just like, great, I'm yeah. level one Captain America. You know? Like that so. makes sense competitively. I can see them making an argument for it, but in a in a single player, multiplayer game, like why do you do yeah. Also, they, they showed off that Hawkeye in that Square Enix thing and it look like a mobile game yes, and i mean yeah. that in every insulting way um yeah. and the fact that like hawkeye like aimed his shot and he was just aiming straight and the arrows were going up at the enemies and i'm like also why is yeah. this bro guy looking guy hawkeye um, yeah that that's the other thing is that they're trying they're trying they're trying to hit the exact same tone and seriousness of the marvel cinematic universe but not using the likeness or voice of any of them. So it's yeah. it's very weird because you're 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 watching it, these cutscenes, and you're just like, that's Captain America. And I guess the story is the same, and he behaves exactly the same, and it's the same world, but it's not Captain America. It's a completely different actor, different voice. And so it's it's weird. I, I'm trying to think, we I think we talked about this recently where there's another game that did it better, where they kind of struck their own way. Um they, and then the other way is to just stick to the um the IP as it currently exists. And yeah. this it's just trying to thread it between the two and it does not, it does not work. So they, I mean, I don't want to say they should kill this game, but they need to have a major revamp and it feels like they're focusing too much on content on being like, now we got Black Panther and now we got Hawkeye. And I'm sure that's going to bring in some people, but there are mechanical flaws to this game that run deep that need to be fixed. Yeah. And back to your point, if I'm coming back to this game to play black panther and i can't get a match as black panther or i can't play with my friends as black panther because we all want to play him then i'm gonna drop it or play on my own and use up all the content and stop playing so it's yeah i feel like it's a catch-22 and yeah i don't know like i don't i was never excited for this game but i expected it to turn out at least a little bit better than this but yeah, so I have a quote here from Wikipedia. Despite initial strong sales, Marvel's Avengers failed to turn a profit with the publisher reporting an estimated 
loss of $63 million for their latest wow. fiscal period, mostly because of this game. Um, so I don't know. I think I don't think it's as, as bad of a state as Anthem, where that was basically dead on arrival, but this game definitely needs to be revived in some way. There's a stronger case for Marvel's Avengers next than there ever was for Anthem next. But yes. it, it doesn't look like they're doing that. So maybe, maybe, maybe if you're playing this game, stop. You're part of the problem. <laughs> Let you it die. That Greg Miller. Let it die. Uh, he did also inherently. Did they make the, the gameplay inherently worse more recently? They were like, oh, so we're going to make the game more grindy so that yeah. you have more time. To... Oh, that's right. They, they doubled the XP requirement yeah. for the later levels without adding like interesting content. And the whole problem was like, I'm grinding against the same enemies and it stinks and the more you do it. And they're like, well, we'll just make you do it longer. <laughs> oh, boy. People love grinding. Yeah. Um, man, that's... I hate that. Shame. I hate that a lot. Um... Oh, there's so, what did I want? Oh, I wanted like, to talk about bring in Zack Snyder. We need Zack Snyder's cut of Marvel's Avengers. <laughs> it's like I go, <laughs> oh, he's so <laughs> that's, what we need. that's what we need. Oh, um, that's the worst. I oh, did you know? I didn't know. Chris informed me that Martian Manhunter is in Justice League, and I didn't know that. Yes. And I looked it up, and he looks like dog crap. What the heck? He looks okay, but he's no. only in it a little bit. And I don't think he's—I don't even—I don't think he's in Justice League. I think he's just in Zack Snyder's cut. Oh, uh, Snyder Zack cut. Snyder's cut, Justice League. Yeah, because he—he teases a lot of stuff for the future, which is probably never going to happen. Is it Justice League the Snyder cut or Snyder cut no, the Justice League? Zack, it's Zack Snyder's Justice League. It's Zack but it's P. Me. Snyder's Justice League. Yeah, it's informally called the Snyder Cut. You know, you actually have to watch all of Zack Snyder's movies to understand it. Hey, folks, um, let's talk about let's talk about no, Nintendo. No, shut up! No, shut your mouth! I want to talk I, about. It's my turn. No, it's, it's not. Didn't you do Avengers? No. Why would I ever talk about Avengers? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Fine, it's your turn. Go talk about let's your. Let's talk crap. about. Rumors, heavy rumors that Nintendo will be using faster NVIDIA chips in the new 2021 new Switch Pro model that will have DLSS enabled. Guys, I'm very excited about this because number one, frame rate is a huge concern on the Switch. And number two, give me DLSS. That's going to get you that 4K output more easily with a better frame rate. How about you guys? Yeah, I, th I think the Switch's main... The main downfall of the Switch is that it kind of runs a bit floppily compared to yeah. what you can get on a proper console. So I think that they're trying to up that up. Maybe a good thing to do. Yeah. Get better frames and make it look better. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And I think it's just that DLSS technology. Shut up, Will. Just seeing what it's been doing, where you can basically throw it at a game and it will run at a higher resolution and a higher frame rate than without DLSS is incredible. So I, it, that's, that's when they said 4K output, there was a lot of concern where people were like, we don't want 4K. And it's not that we don't want 4K, it's 4K 20 FPS. But I think this new chip with DLSS means 4K 30 or 4K 60 is going to be much more reachable in that small package. Does that also mean that the battery life is going to be five milliseconds? It could be. I, I, you know, honestly, I'm not sure how much battery tech has improved since the Switch came out because cell phone batteries... You know, they used to be like 3,200 milliamp hours. Now they're like 4,000 milliamp hours, which is what, like 10, 20% better, but it's still. But then the Switch, the Switch Lite has a better battery life, doesn't it? Or no, the I new Switch were, model. I thought they were saying yeah. better battery life. Maybe. With these new cards. I, I was kind of okay with three hours. That's basically yeah. what I got on my Switch is three hours. I, I, I'm I'm the, the biggest thing I'm looking forward to is the fact that, I mean, most likely it's just going to fill out that bezel on the switch. And I think that'll look really yeah. nice. Um, yeah. Yeah. I definitely want to get one of these though. I don't know what I'm going to do with my animal crossing one. If they make sell a better it. one. Yeah. I'll probably just sell keep it. it to, and then sell it. Yeah. I'll keep it for 50 years. <laughs> sell it to a kid in an alley. Um, yeah. That's super interesting. Uh, the only thing I was going to say, shut up. Uh, is, um, what you were saying about the DLSS is like, it's neat that there's the technology of just like 
upscaling that and making your stuff look good while still running at a at a decent frame rate. Um, because I tried that Hyrule Warriors two demo and it chugged on yeah. uh, docked mode, and I'm like, I'm not even going to consider this game if this is how you're gonna you're gonna yeah. run it. I mean, at this point, I've been like forever. I'm always like, oh, I should finally go back and beat Breath of the Wild, and I'm like, I should just put it on an emulator on my PC and play in 4K at 60. And just I mean, do it that way and get rid yeah. of weapon durability. <laughs> like, I mean, why honestly, not? my big concern with the Switch Pro is that I I don't really have any games to play on it. And that's nothing against the Switch. It's just that I tend to go towards the other consoles or the PC. The Switch is like two, three times a year. I'll take it out and there's a big game released on it. Or if I'm traveling, I'll take it with me. But I think for you, Will, it's like, baby, buy that Switch Pro day one and play Breath of the Wild on it. I think yeah. that's like your... That's your goal. I wish I had that. I wish I had a game along with the Switch Pro that I was like, I need this new console so that I can play this game the best way possible. Uh, and, you know, maybe they'll bring that with the announcement. Who knows? True. Um, moving on. Uh, quick story here. The, there was a Halo Infinite actor uh, was on a podcast called the... I don't know if it's pronounced Fadam. I uh, probably... I was thinking Fadam for F Adam, but... Probably Fadam and Friends podcast. Uh, he had uh, Verlon Roberts on there talking about his career. It wasn't just about Halo uh, as a voice actor. And he mentioned that uh, now it's been pushed to later November this year. Uh, some people are analyzing that that kind of makes sense. The 20, 20th anniversary of Halo is this November. So that would kind of line up if it wasn't delayed again for any other reasons. I mean, the screenshots have been coming out. The game's looking a lot better. I know they've had some internal uh, stuff, but let's open uh, some Halo Infinite this year. I need some, like, I tried Halo 5. I really wasn't into it. Um, it's okay. No, yeah, it's fine. I just, like, I just didn't feel like spending more time on it. Um, uh, you know, Halo 5, real quick. I, I don't know if I mentioned this before kind of blew my mind there's halo 5 single player there's also halo 5 co-op which is a different storyline and different missions really yes yes oh it's 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 i don't i don't know if it's like two full length campaigns etc but like i played a decent amount of the campaign the single player campaign and then i played with my nephew and we were in co-op and I was getting different story missions and different characters. <laughs> Cause you know how there's like, there's like the squad hunting master chief. And so in the single player, you're kind of playing master chief Well, in co-op you're, you're that squad. So you're kind of like intertwining with his missions. It was oh. pretty cool. Honestly. That's um, neat. yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, Carl, what's your, you have experience with the halo franchise? Barely remember playing Halo Three way back in the day with my brother, but beyond that, I really don't. I didn't connect with it as much. It kind of felt like that one series that had its own fan base. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I was it's I was not... pretty into it because we had an Xbox growing yeah. up. So we we did a full playthrough of Halo One recently, and still good. So if you have any itch at all, especially with the Halo Master Chief Collection and Game Pass, it's very easy to give it a shot. They're still solid games. So. Yeah. If you ever think about it. Especially, yeah. Yeah, one's good. Especially all the flood. Uh, so that's interesting. I'm, I'm excited for Halo Infinite. I, I need that, that little bit of Halo High. Uh, speaking of Halo High, hi, hi. Carl, uh, let's do Last Call. Anything else on here? Uh, there is the one quick bit of news. Um, Sony will shut down the PSP, PS3, and PS Vita stores uh, this summer, which the most surprising part of the story to me is how is the PSP store still open? Uh, <laughs> I just, I, I, it's really weird. Oh, yeah, you know it, now, that I, now that I think about it, is this globally? Because like the PSP is still very popular in Japan. There's a lot of it play that daily. Yeah, like PSP and then the Vita a little bit, but there's that that's surprising that they would close it down. I for me, this is just like another caution tale in you know what Xbox Series X looks like a, Series S looks like a great value. That PlayStation 5 Digital looks like a great value, but guess what? 10, 15 years down the line, that store is gonna close and you're just not gonna be able to get games on those consoles anymore. So as somebody who's like started collecting retro consoles and games with it, 
if you go with a digital only console, you're going to be at some point in the future, you're going to be screwed. It's going to depend on how heavily you're screwed based on how long it is. But uh, uh, it's it's a little disconcerting now that we have digital only consoles that they're shutting down stores. Understandable yeah. business decision, uncomfortable consumer decision. I was trying to find, um, I don't know who did it on my Twitter feed, but someone retweeted an article from uh, someone else showing off all the games that will be unable to be purchased or played ever again. Or like that were only on available on those stores and not anywhere else. Um, in which I came across a tweet uh, by someone I follow who said, if internet law is anything to go by next month, all PS3, PSP, and games are free abandonware on the internet yeah. that would be great yeah which is how i get everything um yeah that's crazy uh but also a hundred percent makes sense because what like the wii store shut down the is the wii u eShop sh shut down or is it no, just I the wii i think it's just the wii okay yeah that makes sense because the wii thing was like spend your points before you lose them uh yeah uh, Ian, uh, anything else on here? I uh, just want to mention, uh, looks like Jackbox Party Pack 8 got announced. I feel like 7 was one of the strongest releases yet. I mean, there are five games on it. I think four of them are really good, um, which is a pretty good batting average for most of their releases. Um, so I'm excited to play this. I'm going to promise the day it comes out or shortly thereafter, we'll be streaming it. We'll, we'll Just like we did with 7. Uh, it's just great party stuff. Glad it continues. I'm going to counter promise that and say we're not. No, we are. We're definitely going to. I like Jackbox. No, I, I was. Oh, yeah. Take two. Uh, I really like Jackbox. I was excited when they announced this today. Um, yeah, I feel like we've had good. Some of those streams are the most fun I've had. That New Year's one was very good, despite me mm. getting very drunk towards the end and screaming but other than that uh <laughs> i've really enjoyed those. it's not a shirt <laughs> <laughs> it's or the my defense it's hard to see it as a shirt that's my defense <laughs> yeah some of those champions i drew at, uh, at the end of that <laughs> one were borderline uh awful um okay i'm gonna wrap it up here with just two announcements uh back for blood has been delayed until october that makes sense I still, I believe they're still going to run their open beta uh, in June or July, and then Gotham Knights was also delayed to 2022. Um, it's no big surprise. A lot of like video game analysts have been saying the games that have come out are games that were able to be finished from home, and a lot of games can't do a lot of work while everyone's home, so they're kind of waiting, waiting this year out, and that's why you're not seeing a bunch of huge new announcements from people. Uh, because, and you won't see a lot of like dates attached to things because they just don't know. Mm -hmm. Um, folks, uh, we only have one thing left to do today, and that is to figure out what game we are adding to the subpixel rating system. Folks, if you don't know what that is, consult your doctor, uh, by going to www.subpixelfilms.com and watching the previous episodes. We have two games on the list right now. Number one. The best game of all time, according to Subpixel, is Outer Wilds. Uh, congratulations to Outer Wilds. And number two, the worst game ever made, according to the Subpixel rating system, is The Outer Worlds. Uh, <laughs> just an incredibly bad game, according to us. Uh, we had an amendment added last week. Uh, this is a system of chaos that I have included. That amendment is that each person... Uh, on the show now brings a game we debate which game is going to get added and then we debate where it's going to go on the list gentlemen have you each brought a game today yes okay carl i'm going to go with you first what what is your game what are you what are you throwing up at us yeah i was debating between two games but my biggest shtick is my attachment to the shadow of the colossus game so i think that's what i'm going to bring to the table today uh, I owe Chris money because he said you were going to say that. <laughs> uh, Ian, what game are you bringing? I think there's a hotly contested game that has been talked about for ages. And we need to decide here and now where it is. 
It is one of Bethesda's most popular releases. Brink. Oh, no. <sighs> yeah, worse. It's now Microsoft. It, now that it's part of Microsoft, we got to let... We got to let them know. Bring the servers back. <laughs> <laughs> um, great. Uh, the game I am submitting for this week uh, is Battlefield 1943. Oh, oh. Hey, you know what? I'm just going to say something here. Uh, so the process is that we have to choose one of these games and then add it to the list. Yes. Hey, it's a light news week. What if we just add all three? Uh, we- <clears throat> Hi, George. No, I'm goody. Thank you. Um, you know what? I'm thinking, Ian. Because formally, uh, I haven't formally added this amendment, but anyone can bring up an amendment during discussions. So I'm thinking of adding the Ian Gibson amendment, which is if there's a light news week and it is before... Uh, no, if it's a light news week, we are allowed to add all three games to the list. Got it. Yeah. Okay. So I'll make sure to write that down in the amendments tab, folks. Okay. So what? What? Which game do we want to start with? Let's go in order. Let's start with Shadow. Shadow of the Colossus. I will start because I think Shadow of the Colossus. Which Shadow of the Colossus are we talking about? The original or the remake? The remake are we is putting... just a remaster. It's pretty. It is just a remaster. Thing. Okay. I've never touched it, yeah. so I've only I, played I the original. We'll... I think. I think we do original. So we, we, yeah. we say original, um, yeah. even though they're pretty much the same game. Um, mm-hmm. You know, my gut, gut feeling, I would put Shadow of the Colossus underneath Outer Wilds and above the Outer World. I, I think I would say the same thing. I think they're both fantastic games, but I think that Outer Wilds does some crazy stuff narrative-wise and exploration-wise that is not in shadow of the colossus i i think they're both fantastic games but i think it's just under what what do you think carl i mean i think the biggest thing about shadow of the colossus was what it did at its time um and the fact that it still holds up after multiple remasters it doesn't hold up as well but it still is a good game but i would agree that outer wilds does pull off shit which other games didn't pull off it couldn't pull off and very weird plot twists at the beginning of the game and made you go huh like 90 percent of your playthrough so i think yeah i would agree with that okay so it sounds like we got consensus that uh shall the Colossus is now two out of three when two you out of three like <laughs> <laughs> it is the most middling game according to the subpixel ratings. The new system. average. Yeah. Um, the, okay. Uh, moving on to up. Brink, one Brink. of the most fun I've had on the stream, genuinely, because <laughs> that stream was um, really good. Yeah, just to recap it, because I want to talk about it. We had a series <laughs> where we were playing quote unquote dead games, dead multiplayer games. And we tried to play, I don't even know if we got on the same server with each other. We had trouble, we had to download, we had to purchase DLC to get it running. And then halfway yeah. through the stream, we found a Discord through the Steam page of people who still play the game. And I went in the Discord and I said, hey, we're streaming live. Who wants to play? And we ended up getting like three or four other people to hop into the game with us. And then we just played it. Um, so Brink is... I, I, I never was a big fan of Brink, but it did some crazy things where basically multiplayer... You're choosing a side, and then the multiplayer is like several missions strung together in a story fashion. So, like, you know, the first quote unquote match is you attacking the outside of a base. The next match is you fighting through the base. The next match is you hitting the core of the base. And it had some like some weird objectives. It had some building, it had some class gameplay. I think it was very ambitious for what it was, but I also think that it is a failed game because the mechanics didn't jive well, the multiplayer was a bit wonky. And it just didn't feel that great as a shooter. So, uh, in my personal opinion, I think it's bottom of the list. Uh, thoughts, Carl? I've never played it a game, and I haven't heard of it until you guys brought it up. But <laughs> based on what I do know about the game, it does feel... I mean, Outer Worlds... I, I mean, I feel like the rest kind of are like a higher tier of games. Yep. I don't know. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I think the thing about Brink, I'm just surprised you haven't heard of it because it was so heavily advertised and pushed in the year up to release 
And it was like this big, huge, it wasn't just a bad game. It was a hugely anticipated and promoted game that just thudded into the market. And then I have an answer as to why I do not know it. It was released in 2011, right? Yeah, it is an older game. I was nine. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, so it's, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm fine with bottom of the list for it. That's where it deserves. Yeah. I'll, uh, you know what? I agree. Chuck it at the bottom. It's, it's, I, I remember my friends and I were looking so forward to it and I read a review right before it came out and I decided not to buy it. And my friend had pre-ordered it and he was so pissed that no one else bought it because I'm pretty sure we did it with the aliens and predators game as well. And that one was bad. So he was doubly mad, but brink, I just, it was so heavily advertised it it yeah. also it did the Titanfall story in the multiplayer before Titanfall did that. Like it was like, oh, there's no campaign, all the stories in the multiplayer. Uh and then yeah. the story was just the dumbest thing ever. Yeah. Um yeah. Okay, uh and finally we've got Battlefield nineteen forty three. I forget why I thought of this today, but the ser- it's backwards compatible and the servers are still up and I it's the oh, one wow. it's the one game that i was really good online other like call of duty 4 i was really good online i just didn't play a lot but battlefield 1943 i played a ton and it was so much fun it had the right level of cartoony and world war ii and it was all pacific and just very good very good game i highly recommend checking it out if you haven't like i said servers are still up and it is backwards compatible on the xbox um and i assume it would be on the pc um i'm thinking i don't know if i'll get gracious approval well, for this i i i just want to say there are some downsides to this game which is it's console only battlefield series is a oh, is. big huge fps series and it started on pc and quite frankly it felt like a betrayal at the time as a major pc player and a huge battlefield fan since the very beginning that they would release 1943 on consoles only. Um, The other thing is it's appropriately priced, but it also is a little lacking on content um, compared to larger battlefield releases, but it is, it does have the right price point for that. So, so before you, you give us your recommendation, I wanted to at least poo poo on your parade just, just a tiny bit. Okay. 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 My recommendation was going to be putting it above the outer worlds but below Shadow of Colossus. How do you feel about that, Carl? I don't know. I th- okay, if I were like gut instinct, I'd put it right under Outer Worlds. Mm-hmm. But that's just me. I don't know. If- yeah, I, so I, I don't know which one of you I agree with, because on the one hand, it doesn't have quite as much content as Outer Worlds. And Outer Worlds is a bigger game, both in terms of content, but also the mechanics within it. But the thing is, 1943, I always viewed it as, I think when it came out, it was $20. And it was just like, hey, if you want a solid multiplayer shooter, team-based, it's basically more Battlefield, but we're not releasing a big one yet. Here's a $20 bucks arcade, arcade type game in terms of content and size. And I think it really nailed that. And I'm the thing I'm struggling with is, Outer Worlds is basically like, we're going to make our own Fallout. And they did a good job at it, but they didn't really like super excel at it. They didn't really bring anything new. And 43 knows its own limitations and excels within those limitations. Actually, yeah, that's a good point. So maybe 43 should be higher just because it set its own limitations, but it excels within the limitations, whereas Outer Worlds was trying to do something bigger and better. And instead, it just kind of, it didn't quite, it wasn't quite as good as expected, if that makes sense. I would agree with that. That's, I mean, honestly, I was kind of on the fence of where I was putting it, but that you kind of hit the nail on the head, which the Outer Worlds made a great game in its set of tools, but Battlefield 1943 took their tools, revamped them, and shoved it into a smaller box in in a good yeah. way. Yeah. Um, I feel like, I feel like when they made Battlefield 1943, they, they had expectations of what the game was going to be, and they nailed it. And I feel like with Outer Worlds, they had expectations of what the game was going to be, and they came close, but the story falls apart a little bit, the gameplay falls a little bit, it gets a little boring later on. 
So within the the self-set expectations of what that game is and what type of game you're trying to make, 1943 nails it, whereas Outer Outer Worlds falls a little bit short. Yeah, I would agree. Um, awesome. Yeah, I uh, I have to add the the new amendment uh, on there. I like having this little like through thread on our podcast now because gives me something mm-hmm. to something to balance everything out. Uh, the official new rankings. I I also need to share a version of this. Uh, the like the view only version I need to make sure I do that. So people can check this out on their own uh, official rankings of the subpixel rating system, the greatest game ever made according to us outer wilds. Uh, number two, shadow of the Colossus. Number three, battlefield 1943. Number four, the outer world and the worst game ever made according to us is brink. Uh, not the Disney movie <laughs> uh, folks. That's going to do it. For us here on the local chat, uh, yeah, I'm just like, I was about to say something and then nothing came out. Thank you, gentlemen, both of you so much for joining me. Ian, I missed you so much last week, uh, but it was a absolute delight to have both Kyle Bailey and David on the stream. That was a good time. That is up on Apple Podcasts if you want to listen to that, if you're already listening to this episode. Uh, Carl, thank you for taking time out of your day nice and late to join us all the way from Lebanon. Uh, I'm surprised it worked, to be honest. Yeah, well, thank you for having me. Yeah. Uh, are you sleepy? Nah. Nah? Okay. <laughs> Fine, don't be sleepy. Um, I'm going to start with you. Uh, anything you want to plug, where can people find you, all that sort of jazz, here you go. Do it. Ah, uh, I'm over on Twitter, official OP, I think it's my handle, first O is a zero. I make YouTube videos, so I don't have a custom URL, just good luck with that. <laughs> and that's pretty much it. Awesome, awesome. Uh, people can find all of our stuff, subpixelfilms.com, that'll bring you straight to our YouTube channel, or youtube.com slash subpixel. Um, also, you can find Ian on Twitter, at thinkgibson. You can find me on Twitter, at hunt 270 uh, you can find our good friends over at Save Data at Save Data Team. Uh, that is how I met Carl, and we were able to have him on the show. We will have you back soon because I've enjoyed having you on this, and it's cool to get a perspective of someone who doesn't live in America. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, you're gonna. I, I think before you're on the next episode, you need to have one of every one of those shots. Uh, that way, I know you're a true man. <laughs> There's right before stream. Right, let's go. Yeah, it has to be right before stream. There. It's going to be great. You're going to have a great time. Folks, thank you for tuning in, uh, and we will see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.